Alright friends, I have another video here. I'm going to explore something. This is very important to me in regards to remote viewing, my work in remote viewing, that I've been doing for so many years. And a certain con inconclusive, I'd say, conclusions that I'm I like to explore regarding remote viewing, different styles of remote viewing, the different parts of the brain that may be active in remote viewing, and the different types of brain style, the different types of brains for the different styles of remote viewing and what they might be. And in my opinion, for the past you know, 30 years or so, 25, 30 years, in the, in the public sector, there have been two main styles of remote viewing, in my opinion. They are the CRV and CRV-esque styles that were developed by Ingo Swan and Hal Putoff. So you have your CRV and you have a whole list of offshoots of CRV. There's a whole bunch of offshoots. And then you have the HRVG style out of Hawaii, the Hawaiian Remote Viewers Guild, taught by Glenn Wheaton. And in my opinion, the differences between the two, uh, I'll say, the successful applications of the two do potentially center around different types of brains. People who have certain types of brains may be more inclined to a CRV style. Certain People with a certain type of brain may be more inclined to an HRVG style, meaning that uh, as I was doing my years and years of research into remote viewing uh, and the brain, my, using my own brain as my, my laboratory for exploring the process of remote viewing, which I've been doing for 10, over 10 years now, and po posting those things on for the, everyone to see. You know, and these, you know, the views aren't high, um, but that just is, in my opinion, because the, the subject matter isn't sensational. And because it's not sensational, the, I don't get a lot of views. But that's okay because in my opinion, the people who are interested in what I'm doing aren't interested in as much sensationalism, remote viewing as in, you know, esoteric targets, unverifiable stuff. But the process itself, the in the brain, the nervous system, the threshold of awareness, these very critical factors uh, that because they're so misunderstood in my opinion they get they don't get explored very much because they they're very difficult they're di very difficult and they're very time consuming and um, so in, in my opinion that that may be why they don't get explored as much as the sensational the sensationalism of remote viewing is very popular but i've been expo exploring the process of remote viewing for many many years back in 2016 i made a video where i was beginning to uh, showcase and explore what i was calling dimensional sensations and the dimensional sensation was a big turning point in my exploration because it, it's an actual sensation and it's different. It's different than what may be considered uh, predominant in CRV-esque or HRVG type remote viewing because in my opinion, in my exploration of the brain, I came upon this aphantasia. And aphantasia is a, is a brain style. It's a certain type of brain that processes information in certain ways that are not image-based. 
So in extreme aphantasia, the word aphantasia is kind of is a misnomer. Uh, it can be heavily debated of whether or not aphantasia is a pro is an appropriate word for this type of brain and the way people process information. As you can see in this chart, extreme aphantasia is where people don't have any, any mental images at all. They don't think in images. They think in concepts. You know, that apple is kind of is curvy. It smells sweet. It tastes this way. The, the skin is smooth. It's textury on the inside. It's moist on the inside. All those different things. That's how they process information. On the, on the opposite side, and there are ranges of it. Uh, they get slight images, or a little bit here, but it's off, and then all the way up to here, where they get clear imagery, which can be considered hyperphantasia, where people who have extreme levels of vivid mental imagery. In my opinion, the HRVG side would, if they can control that ex extremely vivid mental imagery, they could be extremely good at HRVG because it is a, a visual-based system of remote viewing, whereas a, a CRV is less image-based, and it's more conceptual, uh, emotional. Not that HRVG has all those things, too, but you can see in the, in, the, in the teaching of the progression of CRV, it kind of moves into something else. And it, and it doesn't trust the imagery as much as you would find in HRVG. So when I look at those two systems, I look at CRV as more of an aphantasia type and HRVG as more of a hyperphantasia type, just my opinions. That's just my opinion. But there was something there that was missing because I've, I've trained in CRV, I've trained in HRVG, both amazing systems. I love them both. If you have the type of brain, aphantasia-esque, CRV is, you'll, you'll excel in CRV. If you don't think in images, HRVG may be very difficult for you. That's, what I'm, that's, that's the differentiation that I've been focusing on for, for years. But I'm adding in a third one, because it's not just aphantasia and hyper, hyperphantasia. There's a, a third one that I, that I have been introducing over the years, and that is the dimensional sensation. In neurology terms, they call it haptic perception. They also call it stereognosis. And what does that mean? It means literally the ability to grasp something and is also known as stereognosis. Perception, in this case, is achieved through the active exploration of surfaces and objects by a moving subject, as opposed to passive contact with a static object during tactile perception. Here's another good explanation. Stereognosis is the ability to identify and recognize the shape and form of objects by the sense of touch and without other sensory input. This perceptual skill that allows us to identify common objects through textile perception without the aid of vision. Textile perception. That is, in my opinion, what, I was, what I'm exploring here and have been for many, many years. Many years. At least since 2016. That's earlier than that too. At least since 2016 that I've been publishing it publicly about dimensional sensations. So in the system that I'm developing, it is focusing on stereognosis, or, can, or is also termed haptic perception. So we have the lesser visual-oriented, the more visual-oriented, and then a third, which is dimensional sensation-oriented, or stereognosis oriented. That's what I've been showing in my examples here. Here's another example with the use of the system that I've developed based on proprioception, which leads to dimensional sensations, aka 
a stereognosis experience of dimensionality. It's the dimensionality that I'm exploring. Here's the range of time and space here. It's a natural setting. And let's, here's an example again of what I'm talking about. The ideograph is producing a proprioceptive experience, stimulating the proprioceptive, the, pro, the proprioceptors in my limbs, and developing a dimensional sensation that I can become aware of as it goes above the threshold of my awareness. So based on this ideograph here, producing it's producing a proprioceptive experience, I'm pattern completing. These are all, again, these are all neuro, uh, neurology terms. Pattern complete, pattern separation, proprioception, stereognosis, dimensional sensation is my term. Ideograph is a common term, you, meaning that it is, it is a gestalt that holds several different dimensional characteristics. That's why I call it ideograph. But here is my first pattern complete based off of the ideograph producing the proprioception is that it is a desert mountain scene. That's based off the dimensionality that I'm now experiencing. As I continue with the ideograms, it's it's either going to prove or disprove this. And we'll see how my confidence level goes up as I continue. Because the point of the system here is that in entry proprioception, my confidence level needs to be 65% or higher to warrant going into the next, going to the next page. If it doesn't, then a remote viewing does not appear to be taking place and I need to abort the session. That's my, that's part of my system. It's there. I'm not ready to render the dimensional sensation yet. Well, I am now. My confidence level is growing and actual remote viewing is taking place. Here is the stereognosis, the haptic perception that I'm experiencing now. And we are 2 minutes and 21 seconds into the experience very quickly. That's that's a big part of what I'm doing. Here's the dimensional sensation. I move those words interchangeably. Dimensional sensation, stereognosis, proprioception. They're, they're pieces of the same pie. Proprioce proprioceptors are stimulated. It's coming through. That was interesting there. Because they, they have these wind erosion elements here that are giving me this kind of stepping type of thing. I had to complete that out of an ancient site because I'm not, I'm not, I didn't get anything here to indicate that that was there. So I don't know what that means, though I can see it is there in the feedback here. I need to keep going. I'm not fully confident. I'm confident here. My confident level here is about 55, moving to 60%. A remote viewing is taking place. This one bumped it up a few more points. I'm at uh, 65, 
66-67% confident that my ideograph is producing correctly. The remote viewing is taking place. See, there's the grooving element here. Dimensionally, I'm here at the at the feedback site. And that's what I want. And that's it. I'm done. I achieved what I needed to achieve here, which is another example of stereognosis, of the dimensional sensation, what it looks like. Why is that important to me? Because I am of the opinion that there are several different brain types and remote viewing can cater to those. So people in the aphantasia spectrum, CRV is a good option. People in the hyperphantasia spectrum, HRVG is a good option. But if neither one of those options seem like a good fit for, for a certain type of brain, the stereognosis option is a third one. The dimensional sensation aspect. The dimensional sensation. When I'm going through one of these and a dimensional sensation is coming through very strong, I, can just, I could just stay there for an hour. Just f like in this case just moving through the dimensional element of it, experiencing the dimensionality of it. Doesn't have anything to do with producing data for someone or solving mysteries or whatever. It's about experiencing that range of time and space dimensionally. It's, a, it's an amazing thing to do. Yeah. It's another element of, our, of what we can do as human beings how we can experience these locations on a dimension dimensionally whether it's a, a, a simulation being created in our brain which I am of that opinion that this range of time and space here in whatever state it exists in is accessed I pull it out through the ideograph producing proprioceptive stimulating my proprioceptors, producing a dimensional sensation in my dentate gyrus, in, the, in my brainstem, in the midbrain, and produces a, a simulation of the dimensionality at the location. That's, that's the key. That's the, that's the beauty of it. That is the beauty of it. That is so cool. That is so cool. So that's what I'm promoting. I'm promoting a third brain type, the stereognosis, or the haptic perception. It's the third one that's out there. My system is still heavily in, the, in, in R and D and development, and it could be years before I have this ready for public consumption. <laughs> But I'm working on it because it's important. It's important. It doesn't have anything to do with money. It doesn't have anything to do with, with anything like that. It only has to do with what we are capable of. And, and it has, doesn't even have much to do with being a data miner, pulling information and entertaining people with remote viewing results. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with that. It's about our capability, what we can do. That's the only thing that matters. It's the only thing that matters to me. You know? And so again, the, the significance of why this is so important on page one, because back here, as I was exp in, you know, began to, the, doing the deep dive exploration of the remote viewing, it became, I wanted to 
I want to be remote viewing on page one in a big way. I want to be experiencing that range of time and space right off the bat. That's what I wanted. And that's what this is about. That's what this is about. So I hope you find it interesting. So many more to come.